Hey guys, Eddie the Magic Monk here. Welcome to lesson 4 of p5.js. Now, in this video, you're going to learn about how to use uh, a bit of interaction between the user and the program. So things like you clicking the mouse, pressing a key on the keyboard and things like that. And we're going to show you how to program that in. If you have been following my previous tutorials, you would have seen that um, I have the code on the left hand side. I've got the program going on the right hand side and it's basically an animation going back and forth. So we're going to change that up to make this animation react to some user interaction. So let's go to the p5.js website and let's look up the reference for events. Okay, so let's go to events and these are all the events that could happen. So an event is just when um, something occurs. So when these things occur, how does your program respond to it? So let's check out the first one. Uh, the easiest one is mouse uh, clicked. So when you click the mouse, what happens? So it's a function called mouse clicked and whatever you want to happen, you can just program it into the function. So let's put that into our program. So at the very bottom of the program, so after all the braces that you've put in for draw and setup and all of that, at the very bottom, I'm going to add a new function called mouse clicked. Okay, and inside the braces is where I put in what I want to happen when I click the mouse. So what do I want to happen when I click the mouse? Well, firstly, let's make, um, let's decide on what we want to do here. Okay, so I have an idea. Let's make it so that whenever I press the mouse, the object moves down a little bit. Okay, the whole object moves down a little bit. So let's declare a new y variable. y is equal to zero. Variable y is equal to zero. And then um, let's add a bit of code saying when you click the mouse, y is going to equal to y plus one. So every time you click the mouse, y increases by one. So where are we going to use it? Well, let's use it somewhere in the code where we draw our objects. Okay, so where do we draw it? Well, we've got a rectangle. So instead of zero, let's put y there. And for the ellipse, we also draw the ellipse. So let's go y plus 100. And then we've got a line, so let's go um, y plus 0 and go y plus 200, y plus 0, y plus 200. And we've also got a triangle, so let's go y plus 100, y plus 300, y plus 300. So if I save that refresh, nothing changes until you click the mouse because remember I'm using the Y coordinate now so when I click the mouse in my program something should happen to the um, shape so let's click the mouse yes you can see it's starting to move down the screen so one is not very obvious but you can see it's moving down when I click the mouse so let's try and make that more obvious um, let's try and make it y equals y plus 10. That should make it more obvious. Refresh. So when I click the mouse, the whole object moves down a bit. Okay, so that's something that um, you could use. When you click the mouse, it moves down uh, by 10. What about changing the color? Okay, so let's say 
when I click the mouse, um, I want I want the color of the triangle to change from red to red to something else. So where is the color change for the triangle? Well, the color change for the triangle is here. Okay, so that's where we want it to be red. So let's say that when I click the mouse, I want the triangle to be um, blue. So let's think about how we want to do that. So let's go variable triangle color equals and let's say blue. Okay, so we've created a new variable called triangle color and then actually initially it's going to be red, isn't it? And then when I click the mouse, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say if triangle color equals equals red. Now notice how I have two equal signs. Why is it two equal signs and not one? Because we're confirming whether the value is red. We're not assigning the value red to the variable. If we want to make the variable, if we want to change the contents of this variable, to red, then I'll just have one equal, but we're not changing it, we're asking if it equals red, so that's why you have two equal signs. If it's re equal to red, we're going to change it to blue. So I'm just going to copy that, put it here, triangle color is equal to blue. Okay, and then I'm going to add another if statement here, I'm going to say that um, if triangle color equals equals red, then fill it with red. If triangle color equals blue, then fill it with blue. So Okay, so I'm going to save that, refresh, and you can see that initially it's red, but as soon as I click on it, it goes to blue. Okay, the triangle color goes to blue. So that's cool. So let's make it so every time I click it, it'll switch between red and blue. So I'm just going to add another if statement. If the triangle color is red, change it to blue. If it is blue, if the triangle color is blue, change it to red. Okay, so let's save, refresh. So now every time I click it, um, each triangle color is red. So it's not working. It's not working. It's still on red. Why is that? Let me try and figure this out. Okay, so we have a bit of a problem and that is after we make it blue, we are checking immediately to see if it's blue and if it is, we change it back to red. So it basically goes to blue for half a millisecond and then it goes back to red straight away. So that's where we want to use the else statement. So we want to say if it's red, change it to blue, otherwise change it, otherwise make it red. Okay, so that's what else means. If this condition is true, we change it. If it's not true, uh, we change it back to red. So if the triangle color is blue, it's not going to do this, it's going to do this and change it back to red. So let's save that, refresh, and now every time I click it, it toggles between the blue and the red. So that's the mouse click function. So feel free to use that to 
get some input from the user and we're going to just show you guys one more thing to do with the mouse and that is what if I want um, what if I want for the X coordinate of this shape to follow my mouse and that is using this property here called mouse X so let's go back to the events mouse X the system variable mouse X so this variable always exists you don't have to declare it you don't have to do anything special you can just use it all the time so um, mouse X so instead of instead of the object moving left and right on its own I want it to follow my mouse okay so I'm gonna <clears throat> disable the sections where it's moving the X coordinate so to comment something you can just press slash slash that comments one line and it'll basically disable the code but I'm disabling this whole section here that changes the direction of the program so that's why I put slash star at the top where I want to disable it and slash oh sorry star slash at the bottom and all of this code in between is disabled so let's save that refresh it's no longer going to move left and right so I want it to follow my mouse so what I do is I'm simply going to say at the top X equals mouse X and that's simply going to make what it wherever my X is it's going to assign that to the variable X and so all the things will follow me around so let's save that refresh and you can see that the object is following me around and if I click it goes down but I don't want it to go have to go down after I click so let's make Y equal to mouse Y and then let's disable this line that adds the Y coordinate by 10 so let's save it refresh and now the whole object follows me around and if I click um, if I click the mouse it simply toggles the color of the triangle okay so I'm gonna let you play with this and see if you can figure out how to make it so the mouse is pointing at the tip of the triangle instead of at the top left corner I want it so let's click out of it first so I want it so that oh it's not easy to click out of it is it I want it so that the mouse is on the middle of the circle so I'll give you that I'll give you a few minutes to figure that out and come back when you're done okay so the answer is very simple you simply put minus 100 at the end of these two lines so whatever the X coordinate is it's going to minus 100 from it and then it's going to draw all of these shapes so for example if the X corner is let's say 300 it's going to minus 100 which will give you 200 and then it's going to draw the rectangle at where X is 200 so it's going to be to the left of the mouse so that's how you do this task okay thanks for watching guys see you next time Watching guys, see you next time.